everybody, it's Sam at Mix Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. This video kickstarts my Mother's Day series 2020. So for hopefully the next seven days, or it'll be over the next two weeks, and there'll be every other day, but you will just be, you know, having lots and lots of Mother's Day inspiration cards, gift boxes, gift bags, and other things as well. I'm really excited to, you know, share the, the projects that I've done. So first up, I've got this very, very cute, I'm calling it a flip lid clutch bag or clutch box, should I say actually. Yeah, clutch box, I think. So it's got a little handle here, and it does, you can hold it. It's really, really nice. Um, I've got a little wooden tag. This is a wooden embellishment here. I've obviously got mum there, and then a little bit of Velcro. You just lift it off, and inside, because I've eaten one, <laughs> there it will, well, inside there will be four Tunnix tea cakes. So these, the one I'm doing, this one and the next one, they're actually going to friends for the, from their children. They're going to be giving them to them. So uh, yeah, but there will be four Tunnix in there and also room to pop. You know, you could put a gift card in there, very easy, you could slide one down the side um, and you can also fill it with any other treats. It doesn't have to be Tunnix tea cakes, but they are enjoyed by so many people. And since I started sharing them on my channel, so many of you have really started to <laughs> love them as much as me. But uh, just seal that there. But you can see just how nice it is. And you don't have to have this little um, handle here. I've just attached it using one of my D rings. You can just have it as a box on its own. So let's get into the tutorial and I'll show you how to make it. Okay, so I've got everything I need here. This is the embossing fold. I don't know, I didn't really mention about that. But I've just done a little bit of detail on the top there and I just thought it looked nice. So I've used this one. I think it must have been free in a magazine. I can't remember, but if anybody's got one like that. But anything, you don't even have to have that. But it was just a nice little touch. And then I'm using Paper Posies. You're going to see it a feature, this collection feature a lot during the Mother's Day series because I just think it works perfectly for Mother's Day. So for today's one, I'm actually going to use the wooden hearts on the front. But for the one that I just showed you, I used these. And I did buy two packs because they're just, they're just so handy. They really are. They make earrings. You can make brooches with them and you can use them as embellishments as well. And then there's the wooden tag. Okay, so that's the three I've got there, and there's the tag, and I've just put some baker's twine or um, garden twine through there, and you can write on the back as well, so, you know, it will be used as a tag. And then here is what I've done with one of the hearts, so I've just drawn around it on the pattern paper, and then I just cut around that and just stuck it on the back. And then I'm going to, you know, you've got somewhere now to be able to, I'm probably going to stamp mum, or I've already gone ahead and done these ones, so what I've done is just die cut them with the same cardstock that I'm doing the card in and then also using some fun foam so it's just cream fun foam behind and then stuck them on top and it just gives you instant dimension rather than having to cut lots of you know the same letter and it's using these here which were from the works probably about two years ago now but I think they still had them up up until last year and they might be on the website but they're really handy they're a nice size so that's what I've got there so it, it may be that I, I might have to change that up a bit or I might have this running along the top who knows, but anyway, that's what we're gonna be using as our embellishments, and this is the paper pad. So I'm just using the six by six today, and it's beautiful, it's what I used to make the bureau. Okay, so we'll go through all these little measurements as we get to them. So you just want one piece of cardstock that's eight and a half by 12, okay? And first of all, we'll go along the eight and a half inch side. You want to score at, which I've done this the right way, there we go. You want to score at two and one eighths of an inch and six and three eighths of an inch, okay? And then along the 12 inch side, I've done it this way, yeah, I did. So you want to score at three and a half, five and five eighths, nine and one eighth, and then this last one here is, it's 11 and one, two, three sixteenths of an inch. So it's that funny measurement. So the easiest way to do it is we want to score where, so we've got 11 and one eighths is here. And then we've got this notch, this little kind of bit that comes out. That's where we want to score. So if you want to, you may find it easier to put a little pencil mark just um, you know, in between the 11 and one and the 11 and a quarter. So just there. And then you're just going to shift your cardstock until that pencil mark meets that track and then you can just score. We just want to extend this by 1 16th of an inch so the flap or the flip lid can close. But also if you do have the hunky-dory scoreboard, they have this little 
kind of recessed part here, which means that you can just shift your cardstock into that section and then score, and it will give you that perfect, um, you know, amount that you need. That it, that basically there is your sixteenth of an inch. So this is they they also say that this is your gift box scoreboard because having that little section there will allow you to make your your lids. So that's what you want to do. So if you work in if you can work in sixteenths of an inch, because I know some people can you know can do it, then it's the one two, yes, yeah, three sixteenths of an inch. But that will be if I just bring this up again just so it's a bit closer. But so here's your eleven and one eighth of an inch. It's just like this, there we go, just here. And that's your eleven and a quarter here. It's this little notch here, which is a sixteenth. Put a pencil mark there and then shift it along until that pencil line meets up with a tr with a track. But also, if you've got this board, you're just moving it right into that little section here, which you'll see on your board, and then just score. Okay? It's not the end of the world if you don't do it. The box will still close, but it might bow it a little bit. It'd just be a little bit snug. So, yeah, that's that's the, the only kind of, I guess, slightly complicated bit that we have to do for this. So that's all the scoring. I'm going to remove that pencil mark. And then we want to fold and burnish all of those score lines. Okay, then we want to do some cutting. So with the tab end here, on your right hand side. We're just going to cut all the way along the bottom score lines up to their first score line. Okay, so just all of these up to this one and then all of these up to this one here. Okay, so next you've got your tab end here and then you'll have squares and squares here. You want to just take a wedge off of these ones Okay, and then with these ones here, we need to trim them because what's going to happen is this is going to come around like this and it's going to form the side, it's going to, you know, this lid part here. So you can score if you want, but you, it's just easy. Well, yeah, you can just basically do what I'm going to do here. So bring that one around to a right angle and then just lightly draw a pencil mark where it sits. You can see that I've just brought it over that one so it comes up to a right angle and then just cut that one and because it's going underneath you know just cut it up a little bit shorter but now that can just cover there nicely okay so again I'll just show you on this side just bring it around over there if you want to just measure it with a ruler you can do but I'm just roughly drawing a pencil line there and then just cut above that pencil line just to make sure that you're not going to see any of it like so. Again, you can see now where they're both going to go over and form our lid. Okay, now we want to start putting it together. So what's going to happen is these are going to come up, the back one's going to go around first and then the front and then the lid, once we do it all, We'll go like this. And because we've done that little extra sixteenth of an inch on this piece here, it will close nicely over the top there. Okay? But we want this nice front here where it just all continues round rather than having the back go over the front. You you have this finish here, so it doesn't always look as nice. So what I would suggest you do first of all is pop your glue on these tabs here, do one at a time and bring up the back and just make sure you get a nice corner there like so. So again I'm just going to fold that one in. And just bring that one around. The key is just keeping everything nice and straight. Now you can just pop glue on oh, all of the side on this one. And again on this one here. Just bring them up and around. And then we need to do these bits. But before you do that, you need to add 
your handle. So this piece here is eight inches by, let me just grab my ruler, by three quarters of an inch because that's the width of the D-ring. That's what will fit into mine. So, you know, play around with what you've got. I will link these ones. I've brought these so many times from the works and I've got silver ones listed, but they are from the outer sides. The full width is one inch by just over five eighths of an inch. Okay, but basically that's going to go through there. Sorry, that's going to go on last. You want to do your little one to go inside. So again, I need to just cut that. I forgot to do that one actually. So I'll do it now. So it was five eighths, which is going to be about there. And I'm just going to, you don't need it this length at all. But at the minute I've got it at two, but you will trim it back. But you just want to just curl it around and then you're just going to feed it through and just stick the two together because this is how we're going to attach it to the bag. I'm just going to add some glue there and just close that up. Okay and then what's going to happen, decide what side you want it on, mine's on the left but you're going. To, this is going to stick in here and then that's going to go over the top so it's all concealed inside so obviously you don't want this coming down past there so I'm just going to trim mine up a bit there okay and then I'm going to add some glue onto that bit there you don't want to go all the way up to the top because that will stick out so you want to stick it along the middle of that side piece make sure the d-ring can move quite freely at the top like so and then I'm going to now stick this over the top so yeah so if you do want to add the handle you need to do that before you stick the side down just on the one and now I can just stick that over the top Ooh. like so remove some of the score line if you've got any score line on here get rid of it because it will come down a little bit too long otherwise it's better Okay, so now that's what you'll have. Okay, and then again with this side, I'm just going to trim just any of that score line from the top there. And again, glue on the back and stick that side down. Okay, so while that's just drying, this piece here is... I did mention it, didn't I? Yeah, just, yeah, it's three quarters by eight. And what I've gone along and done is I've just put it in my scoreboard and I've just scored every single score line along that side and then every one along that side and it just gives you that cool effect. And then I've just gone and just kind of curled it there as well. But you just want to feed that through the D-ring and then just put a little bit of glue and then just stick them. I've stuck them like together this way rather than, so it's like a, a big ring. It's up to you how you do it really. You could put a little bit of mirrored cardstock here to do one of like the faux metal ends that I like to do as well. You know that's always a nice thing so. But there. There is your little handle. So now we need to decorate everything So it's very you know pretty quick to do. So this on the front here, I'm not decorating the back, you'll see there I haven't bothered so again if you want to you can. But this is a piece of cardstock, I think it was four by three and three quarter, oh no three and a quarter. So four by three and a quarter, that's going to go there. And then these two pieces are for the sides and these are, they're just under two. It's like in between one and seven eighths and two, so you, you, you decide, and that's by three and a quarter. So I'm just going to stick those down. Okay, and then for the top of the lid, my pattern paper is four by one and seven eighths. So I've obviously done it that because it would be the same width. And then, mind you, that is that little bit longer actually. And then this is the embossed piece is three and three quarters by one and a half. So they're stuck down. And then to decorate the sides of the lid and the front here, I've got two pieces that are five eighths of an inch by, again, it's just under two. 
and then I've got this one which is four by again that same width so five eighths of an inch so again I'm just going to get them all stuck down okay so I've stuck them all down so now I'm just looking at this heart and I'm wondering whether I might have mum along the top like that so pop that down there a minute like so but I might put a different I might do a you know die cut the letters again just so you can see them although they do show up quite well and then have the heart there so I might do this one a little bit different like that so that's what I'm thinking and then this one here just will get threaded through so I'm just going to pop this on high speed and get it all stuck down all I do is just I'll just put some hot glue on the top parts there and stick that on So there's my box finished. I've just gone ahead with some sparkle pen. This is the Spectrum Noir and it's still a bit wet so you might not see it but it is starting to sparkle. Um, I've added my heart and then I've done that little kind of flag tail banner just so that the, the mum pops and I changed it as well and used the just die cut it again with cream card just so that it kind of really stood out. Put a few little flat pack pearls, flat pack? Flat backed pearls and then we've got our tag there as well but I think it's so cute it really is very very sweet you can obviously decorate it however you want it doesn't even have to be for Mother's Day and then there's the one that I shared at the beginning and again I've just gone over you can see the sparkle now on that it's loads really really nice and I've added a bow I forgot about the bows this is it's more orangey so it works better with this cardstock which is more of an orange red whereas that one was more of a softer pinky pinky red so um, yeah it just didn't look as good on uh, that one as it does on this one so yeah there they are two very cute little flip lid clutch boxes so I hope you've enjoyed them I hope you give them a go and I hope you've liked the first video for this year's Mother's Day series so tune in like I said it'll either be tomorrow if not it'll be the day after but there will be plenty of Mother's Day inspiration and I hope you enjoy it thanks for watching bye